Hi guys, Luke Jones here, back for Darts Mad. And this week I'm delighted to be joined by big Dutchman Martin Kleermaker. How are you, Martin? I'm fine. I'm really fine. Are you? Yeah, very well, thanks. Um, so a couple of weeks have passed now since the summer series. Um, how good was it being back after four months off? Uh, I was really happy that we uh, that we that we had played again. It's, it's it's been a long time, and I quit my work for it. So I, I was waiting for being back on the board, and so I was really happy with the summer series. Five days of darts, and I really enjoyed it. Obviously, things were different uh, with the conditions, wise. But did you did you like the conditions? Um, I think um, how they arrange it, uh, like the, the, how the boards now are, for me, keep it this way. They're, this, this is really good. You have your own table. Uh, yeah. I think it made it better than before. Um, the only thing that was a little bit not nice was uh, the food in the restaurant. You did not, <laughs> not have choice. It was not nice, but... That was the only problem. For the rest, I think the PDC uh, did a great job to uh, arrange it like this and um, yeah, keep it going. Yeah, uh, you beat some brilliant players over the course of the five days. Uh, it started on day one where you beat Gerwin Price. Well, my favorite player, Gerwin Price, in the last sixty-four. Uh, that must have given you so much confidence going into the rest of the summer series. Yeah, I think if you have to play five tournaments in five days, uh, it's really important to um, have a, a good start, a good feeling mm -hmm. for the rest of the days. And uh, first day, I won two exciting games, two times six five, uh, uh, and the second game was against Gurren Price, yes, the number three of the world, the number yeah. one seed at the moment. So yeah, I was really happy with uh, with that win. Um, but after that, I had to play Stephen Bunting and then you lose. So then it's for me, it's like, okay, you won from Grimmer Price, but you lose from Stephen Bunting. So it has to be, it has to go into better for tomorrow. Yeah. But the feeling was, the, the, the feeling was good. I, um, I was in a good shape. I trained a lot before uh, the summer series. So I've, I've prepared myself really well for it and it paid off. And you, you mentioned there, you did go down to Stephen Bunting, but then, the next day, you drew, you drew him in um, round one. Are you thinking, yes, I get another chance to get revenge? Yeah, for me, it's exactly that, that thought. It's, um, when I lost from somebody, I'm sick of it. Yeah. And I want to play him again as quick as possible to take my revenge. And with Stephen Bunting, I lost from him on the first day. And the second day, I had to play him again. So for me, it was a great opportunity to yeah, take him back. Yeah, you beat him with a 98 average, so that's not a way, bad way to get revenge. Um, and then you went on to make your first PDC quarterfinal. What was what was that like? That must have been pleasing for you. Yeah, before the summer series, I told my uh, my brother, uh, my main goal, my first goal was to win my board uh, one time. Because now every time I uh, reach the board final, but I didn't win the board final, so the yeah. second day... Board final, I had to play Christopher Tuski. And for me, there was only one thing in my head, in my mind. I'm going to win this game because I'm not going to lose again a board final. And yeah. that was a great game. That was really a great game. Both players, uh, we both average above the 100. Yeah. Uh, uh, the last leg was 180, 96, 180. Check. <laughs> so that's, that's some good stuff. Um, and after that, then that was re really a relief for me. That's like finally I've got that win in the board final, and now we can go further. And yeah, reaching quarterfinal in the PDC Pro Tour is, is some good stuff. And yeah, now I'm, uh, I'm gonna go for some more. Yeah, given that um, what Christoph Ratajski has done in the last two years, um, and the level you played at to beat them, do you think? That was the biggest win of your PDC career so far? Um, the biggest win on this moment, I don't know. Maybe it's Gerwin, maybe it's Christopher Tarski. But I think if, if uh, like last week, if I watch all the games, I think my biggest win was against Luke Humphreys on the oh, streaming board. Yeah. yeah. That, <laughs> that was awesome. That maybe my one of my best games ever. Yeah. And 
uh, to hit the 140 on that moment uh, at 5-5 if, if him on 25 was uh, yeah it was a really awesome feeling and uh, it was a really exciting game and I loved every every minute yeah 107 average was it yeah 107.7 yeah uh, that's decent <laughs> yeah and he was 105 or 106 something like that so he was playing also awesome yeah so he, he got a bit that got a bit unlucky there didn't he yeah, I, was, I spoke with him in the evening. He said this year I, I um, hit uh, four or five uh, average above the 105 and I lost all matches with it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's a pretty C. You can lose yeah. if you get like 140 in average, like Devin Peterson on the last day in the semi final. Yeah. You hit 110, 111, but still you can lose your game. Sometimes it's madness, uh, average and, and the level of the PDC. Uh, you did. Go down in the last eight to Dave Chisnell, but how pleasing is it making the quarter final so early into your PDC career? Yeah, I was really, really, really happy with that. It was a long day and uh, started well against uh, Dave Chisnell, but after a 2 0, he threw some awesome darts and I didn't have an answer on that. So, yeah, I was happy with the quarter final and um, for me, this. Uh, I prove myself I can do it. I can uh, play against the best players in the world and I can beat the best players in the world. I know it's there, but you have to do it. And uh, for me, that was the biggest um, winning thing in the in the summer series. I beat some really good yeah. players who are, who are playing already for a couple of years high in the standards. Um, that, that was for me maybe the, the most important thing to beat those guys. Yeah, you reached the last 64 on day three, then last 32 on day uh, day four, where you average 100.38 to beat Robert Collins, and then you said that one against Luke Humphreys. Um, then you lost in the last 32 on day five, but your performance is in the summer series um, shows that you can do a lot of damage in the PDC. Yeah, the, the only thing I had on the fourth day when I beat Luke Humphreys, it was our, our board was, was the standard was. Yeah. Uh, I had to mark the first game from Manchester Stuyovic, and he hits the 109.4, something like that. <laughs> Misses the nine darter in the last leg on a double. Then we had uh, Andy Bolton, who, is, who wins 6 1 with 105.6 average. <laughs> then we had Steve, Be- Steve Beaton against uh, Luke Humphreys, and Luke Humphreys was after four left on an average from 111. So I was watching it. It was, oh, fourth game. Ah, I've got some time. And the tournament was one hour on, and I had to play because the level was yeah. ridiculous at our board. But when I beat uh, uh, Luke Humphreys, there was so much uh, energy in my body and so much yeah. adrenaline. And I came back from the streaming board and they told me, like, you've got like five to seven minutes for your next game. And for me, that on that moment, it was too short yeah. uh, to prepare myself again for a good, because I, I didn't, uh, against Mansour in the beginning, I didn't have my rest. After four, yeah. I was four nil down. I got some rest, but that, yeah, it was too late. So, that was a little bit, uh, yeah, too bad for me because the feeling that day was awesome. But I think if I, if I, if I've got five to ten minutes more, yeah, was surely a better game. But fair play to him; he played well, and I wasn't there. So then it's okay. Tomorrow and one more day and one more shot. Yeah. Um, let's go back to Q School. Um, you it was your first attempt at Q School in January, and you were very impressive in coming through that. Um, yeah, that must have been you must have been delighted with that on your first attempt. Yeah, for me it was really important. Uh, Q School this year was, I think, m- more important than ever because uh, everybody knows the, the the situation now with the BDO and the w- WDF now taking part a bit but on that moment I was a BDO player and the BDO on that moment was shit so <laughs> the true school was really important for your future yeah? Yeah. be the challenge tour to be the pro tour 
And uh, for me, the most important thing was reaching the final on day one. Uh, yeah. School it was a good start, missed one dart to win, but that was a good start. And um, yeah, after four days, when uh, they, they, they came to me like, you've, you've got them, was like, oh, yes, awesome. Now we can, now we can play the real stuff and uh, we can go on. And I was really happy. And uh, I always said, like, I, I, I want to play the best players in the world because I will be a better player then. Yeah. Uh, I've got that opportunity now and um, a couple of months now busy in the PDC and I'm already seeing myself, my level is higher, higher, higher. And um, now I'm looking more for some that, 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 that my average, when I'm not playing well, I still want to play like 90, 93 at least. Yeah. yeah. Training a lot to, to, to build to that. But on this moment, I'm really happy with... Uh, with the way I play and uh, and how it goes. You mentioned it there. You wanna if you're not playing your best, you want to average about a ninety three. It um it's really important if you want to make it to the top. You've got to have a good B game, of new. Yeah, I think that's the, that's the most important thing. Um, if you're looking to the to, to the best players of the world, when they when they play the B game, it's still like ninety three, ninety five, ninety six, something yeah. like that, and um. If I play my B game, then it's now at that moment maybe like 87, 86, something like that. And then you can't win from them. So you have to play your E game all the time. And you can't play your E game, your A game all the time. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's a lot of training. Like today, I'm going to train the whole day. Uh, in the afternoon, a session for from three or four hours. And tonight, a session for three or four hours. Um, yesterday, I practiced five, six hours, something like that. Uh, it's, it's a lot of practicing and there's a lot of working, but um, yeah, at the end of the day, uh, it works. And uh, I'm really happy with with, uh, with my game. Uh, it proved so well. So, um, yeah, I'm really happy with it. You mentioned um, how many hours you put in in practice there. Eh? How do you mix your practice up to make sure it doesn't get tedious and you kind of don't get bored? <laughs> Yeah, we practice all. I'm, I never practice alone. Like uh, uh, this afternoon, I'm going to practice with uh, Ron Meulenkamp. Oh, not not play. a bad practice yeah. partner. Yeah, this, uh, and uh, yesterday I trained with uh, Jelle Klaas and Mike Dek, uh, Derek Telmakis with, with a larger group. And uh, it's a nice way to train if you train in a group, uh, four or five people or three people. You can play some games, you can play some. Yeah, other games and you, you you can train like four or five hours without taking energy, something like that. It's just fun and yeah. uh, having a talk. And, but yeah, I quit my work for darts, so uh, I have to, darts now is my work. So I've got some time left now for a lot of training hours, and I will take the training hours because I want to be better and better and better. And uh, for me, it's like they said to me, like, you have to go in the top 64. I said, yeah, that's step one, top 64. Yeah. That's not going to stop at the top 64. I want to go higher. I want to reach the top 16, something like that. And uh, I know um, I can do that, but uh, I have to work for it. And it's not in one or two years. Uh, I have to take my time for it step by step. But... I will have my patience, and when my chance is there, I will be there. Yeah, you've made a really good start to life in the PDC. You've qualified for three of the four Euro Tour events. Obviously, we've only played one because of the pandemic. How important is it to qualify for as many Euro Tours as you can to boost your ranking? And it's really important, and it's also important for your stage um, experience. Like if you have a Euro Tour, it's a nice, I was in hostel and it was a nice stage, big stage. And at the BDO, I didn't play at stage that much because you only have the World Championships at the BDO, the World Masters. But I didn't go to the World Masters last year and the World Trophy. That's it. Um, and here's so much stage uh, yeah. tournaments and like this, and the Euro Tour is it's really important and. Now, in this moment, um, yeah, I qualified three out of five because this year there is only five. So, yeah, there's a good chance I can qualify myself for the European Championships, uh, which is great because it's a big television uh, tournament. Yeah, yeah. It's a great experience. 
and that was my main goal. My main goal this year in the first year was I was I want to reach the European Championships, the Players Championship Finals, and the World Championships. But for me, the three most important yeah. tournaments. And on this moment, yeah, it's it's going well. Uh, virtually, um, I've got all three, and I'm close to the World Grand Prix also. So maybe uh, we can take that one also. But um, yeah, I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm really happy and. and the Euro Tour, I really like it. I really like the system of the Euro Tour, uh, the crowd. Uh, yeah, no, on this moment, no crowd because of the pandemic. But <laughs> uh, in Assault, was was really awesome on the Saturday and the Sunday. Yeah. Uh, and I really, really, really enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, uh, also that was a good tournament, reaching finals day in the first year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm really happy with it. Yeah, you reached the last 16 on your first Euro Tour event. You went down to Mervyn King. You you actually played some decent stuff. So how frustrating has it been now, um, not being able to play the other two you've qualified for, given how well you've done in the first event? Yeah, I think that's 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 really important. I'm 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 lucky now in this moment uh, that I qualified myself three out of four, and we've got one more qualification to go. Yeah. Because if you if you're not qualified yourself yet on this moment, there's one thing sure in this moment: you, you don't qualify yourself for the European Championship because that's yeah. really hard. Then you have to qualify for one Euro Tour. You have to win something like that. Yeah. That's some really hard stuff. You're it's leaving awesome. yourself a lot to do then, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, for me, it's like I've got already three thousand on the ranking for the Euro, Tour and I've got two to go. So if I can win some rounds uh, in those two Euro Tours. Yeah, uh, I will be fine. Um, so, yeah, some good stuff. Yeah, so going forward now, are you confident not only getting in that top 64 in the two years, but getting into the top 32 and, and beyond? Yeah, for me, the most important thing is the last uh, reaching a top 64 in two years. But then I'm looking to the ranking now. Um, and I qualified myself for those TV events. Um, I'm standing good for at this moment. Um, maybe I can reach the top 64 in one year. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the next year I want to go like as close as possible to the last 32 or something like yeah. that. I don't know what, uh, what, uh, how much money I need more for the top 32. I have to look to that. Um, but um, yeah, at the end of the day, I want to reach as high as possible, and uh, and 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 then for as long as possible. I want to play this for yeah the rest of my life, something like that, yeah. <laughs> till I quit till I quit ours. Because uh, yeah, going to the PDC is I think the the, the best choice I ever made in the in the darts, um, and for everybody who wants to go to the PDC or uh, doesn't know yet, go to Q School and if you reach a tour card, it's some really, really, really good stuff. Yeah, and um, you've seen with players like Aaron Beanie this year. He went to Q School, didn't expect to get a card, uh, but he, he, he came through. Yeah, I think... Um, some players also, uh, uh, maybe some Dutch players, but if you reach his tour card, um, Q school is tough, really tough. Yeah. But uh, Pro Tour is even tougher because yeah. the level is, is yeah, it's, it's ridiculous sometimes. Um, and some players uh, who reach the tour card didn't have much experience. Uh, yeah. on- the old tour, or I don't, I don't know them really well. But I think if you don't have much experience, uh, then it's really hard to go to the PDC. You need some experience, some baggage from the BDO or something like that, or challenge tour, um, because playing the best players in the world is um, is hard. Uh, um, it's not making friends, something like that. You have a nice talk, but it's it's business. It's really. New. Business. That's the big difference between the BDC and the BDO. BDO yeah. was at the board was a little bit business, but around us was just fun. It was one big family. Yeah. And yeah. It, it's, it's, it's business. It's, it's hard. Yeah. Um, you have to make yourself a good mindset. I've got some help with that. I've got a personal trainer in that. 
um, and I really need that because yeah, there are there is also a weekend that you didn't win a game or yeah, yeah you lose first round, first round, and then a weekend after that you lose first round, it's first round. It's possible. Now it's going well, but maybe the time will come, and then is the moment you have to be strong and, and yeah. for some new players. I was lucky that in the beginning it it went directly pretty good. Yeah. Uh, earning the money. But how longer it takes to reach this in the money, how harder it will get. Now Aaron Beanie had his first win at the at the summer series. Yeah. Um and a lot of people wants to interview him and uh, it's quite nice, but at the other side you, you get questions on how it's feeling to reach your first win. It, it's 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 not a nice question, you know. No, yeah. Um, because people seeing him like uh, he's the worst player of the PDC, something like that. But mm. uh, he can play. Maybe maybe yeah. if he couldn't reach his top level on this moment. But um, if he can continue his wins, it will be better and better and better. And that, that's yeah. for, uh, everyone has his good days and everyone has his bad days. And yeah. Hopefully, I've got some really uh, good good days to come. Yeah, but, um, yeah, it's 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 hard. And um, if you don't have a good start, you, you have the top sixty four, you need like um, around the fifty thousand pounds after two years to reach the last sixty four. Yeah, if, and now if you are like four or five months on the PDC, and you've got only five hundred or two thousand. Yeah. And and then you you look to the ranking. It's like oh, yeah, uh, that's a big hole for two thousand yeah. fifty thousand. Um, so reaching the worlds is important. Reaching oh, yeah, that's that's important because that's good earning money for uh, for your ranking. Yeah. So yeah, but the main thing is I'm only I'm only want to look to myself. Um, I've got my plan. I've got my goals and my dream mm. and uh, yeah i'm planning my way through it and uh, it's going really well uh, in the last year you had a really strong year in the uh, year last year in the bdo uh you've done the double at the west freeze open and the masters you won the welsh open and you made your de- debuts at the bdo world trophy and the bdo world championship did that give you the belief that you could Go to Q school and get a card. Yeah, the most important thing was the, the West Fries Open. Uh, that weekend, um, I was playing awesome. Uh, maybe yeah. it was the best weekend uh, I've ever had. Yeah. Um, um, my game was so good. I was feeling so brilliant. I was in my flow all the weekend. And that was the moment I started believing myself. That was the moment I thought, okay. I can beat a lot of players and I can um, arrange a lot of damage into the dart uh, world. And um, yeah, for me, but that was the moment when I uh, when I was winning some tournaments. That was the moment that was fun. Yeah, Q school it has to be. Yeah. Especially with uh, the whole situation in the BDO, it was yeah rubbish. No brainer. I didn't go to the World Masters because. The whole organization was shit, and uh, the the BDO World Championships uh, with, the, with the prize money is ridiculous. Mm. Um, so I knew the BDO was done. So yeah, Q School. Uh, I already knew it in in, in April, something somewhere like that. I, I was going to Q School, yeah. but I I waited to tell till a good moment. Because uh, you, you still have to make your focus on the BDO tour in that moment. Yeah. Um, as I said there, you made your debut with the BDO World Championship. It wasn't held at the Lakeside uh, for the first time. It went to the Indigo at the O2. How disappointing, yeah. how disappointed was you not being able to play um, at the venue where Raymond Van Barneveld won four of his world titles, the LA Class M won. Christian kissed it one, your fellow Dutchman. How disappointed were they not being able to follow in their footsteps on that iconic stage? I was really disappointed because uh, that was, for me, that was a bucket list thing. Uh, yeah. The lakeside, it's, 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 it's old, but it's 
it's dark, you know, it's, it's, it's that venue. Uh, I've been uh, there one time for the World Masters and the Lakeside Playoffs. Yeah. So, uh, I saw the venue and it, it, it was really old and it was not to date. But then when you saw the stage and the crowd so close on the stage, it was yeah. so tiny, so much. It was, uh, and uh, also when you saw it on TV, when uh, in the time of the dream of Barneveld, uh, yeah, for me it was like it was a dream to play in the Lakeside stage. And then they yeah. went to the when I played for my first game it's it against Gino Phosphor. Uh, four people, three cows, two pigs, and uh, one chicken. <laughs> was, was not much. So that was that was uh, that was disappointed. But at the end of the day, um, uh, the board is the same, uh, the distance yeah. is the same, the venue is different, and you play for yourself. And um, so you have to change your mindset and just go to there and do your, your give your best shot. But I wish I played on the lakeside because yeah. I really. Thank you. You are, you've made it quite clear what you think of the BDO and the current state of it. Um, what do you make of the current state? It's, um, it's such a shame because it's brought through players like top brilliant Dutchmen like Michael Van Gerwen, Barnwell, Klaas, then the list goes on. So it's really disappointing what's happening with the BDO at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. Um, uh... As, as, as in the darts world, you need something like the BDO. If yeah. you're not professionals, you've got the tennis tour, and you have, you need something after that, like the, the, the WDF or the BDO. Um, but uh, the biggest mistake the BDO made is to take this Jacqueline and yeah. to take back again. Um, yeah. He makes a lot of mis- mistakes. He said he didn't make a lot of mistakes, but he did make a lot yeah, of mistakes. He, he doesn't take any responsibility, does he? Not at all. And but, but at the same time, at the World Championships, I maybe saw him in the whole week one or two times. He doesn't came to us, to the players. He doesn't came in the players' area. He was only hiding because everybody mm. was angry at him. And then he doesn't take his responsibility to talk with us and speak with us. No, he's going to hide himself because he is a coward and he not wants to see us because he knew we were angry because he knew it already for a long time because he yeah. started the World Mars or something before, somewhere before. So he knew we were really angry at him. That. Uh, it's, it's a really shame that, that it's something that uh, that's already for years now, and, and, and a lot of good players started uh, at the BDO. All the good players: Phil Taylor, Raymond van Barneveld, uh, John Lowe, uh, yeah. Rick, all those men. And yeah, now it's gone. So yeah, it's 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 a shame. But at the end of the day, I think it's a good thing because on this moment, you can't go on with the BDO. So. Hopefully the WDF can continue the work now and maybe make it a bit better than it was. And yeah, it will be. Yeah, and um, Dutch Darts has been thriving for the last few years now. Um, it's a, it's in a really good place, and they've got loads of Dutch men in our top. Well, on in our top 128. Yeah, not yeah. No, it, at the PDC, we play with like 17 or 19 tool cards holders, yeah. something like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, there are really, really uh, much good dark players. Um, also, really good players without a tool card. Yeah. Um, but that's a good thing because when we have, uh, when we go on our trainings uh, with some people, uh, it's always on a high level. And, yeah. Uh, we uh, trigger each other to a higher level and to make each other better um but it's nice i think for the, the dutch stars and uh, for the dutch fans it's it's good to see uh, a lot of dutch players and every year one or two um, um, going higher coming through maybe hopefully i will be there in in, in this year or next year uh, high in the in the yeah. rankings but for the dutch stars uh, it's, it's 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 really good is it one of your goals out to make it to a World Cup of Darts because you've got Michael Van Gerwen who's a certainty for, for the team. But then you, if you have a good couple of years now, you could get into that second spot, couldn't you? Yeah, 
it should be nice. It should be really nice to play uh, the World Cup of Dart. Uh, I played uh, for the Dutch national team four years for WDF, and I yeah. always re- uh, enjoyed it to take on that orange shirt. It was yeah. always a proud moment to uh, to play for the Dutch national team. So playing for your country is, is, is something different to play for your own. So uh, yeah. Uh, hopefully in the future I can reach it. I mean, this moment this year I have to improve uh, so much. So I have to play uh, a lot of tournaments and I have yeah. to win a lot. Of but maybe in a couple of years should be uh, should be really awesome. And this moment, Michael is is, uh, is outstanding. Is being number yeah. one. And after that, you've got uh, now this moment, Danny Noppert. Uh, yeah. Just go to the second. You've got Noppert, uh, Jeffrey Deswan, uh, Jermaine Watimena. It's, it's all close. It's all the top 20, 30. Um, but I think I can reach the top 20 or 30 as well in, in, yeah. in a couple of I know my game. I know I can beat a lot of uh, good players. I already beat a lot of good players. Mm. And now if I can build some consist- consist- consistency in it, yeah. um, I think I, I, can be, I really can be uh, one of the good players. Yeah. Um, right, Martin, I'm going to leave you with one last question, what I ask everyone. Who are your top five greatest players of all time, going from number five down to number one? Oh, five great players of all time. Uh, oh, that's a good question. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. <laughs> um, I expect uh, to see uh, a couple of Dutchmen in you. Yeah, I <laughs> He won the man, uh, the man himself because uh, uh, Raymond van Barneveld uh, yeah. is the reason I play darts. Yeah, saw him winning the world championships, and uh, yeah, I thought, hey, that's an interesting game, throw some darts <laughs> in some uh, in an area. So, yeah, Raymond van Barneveld definitely in my in top five. I think he's my number one because uh, if I didn't saw him winning, uh, yeah, I didn't have to play darts, he was still playing soccer. Yeah, so, he is, he's the granddad of Dutch darts. Yeah, he's the granddad, he's the granddad of, the, of the Dutch darters. Um, and I also always love Phil Taylor. What, oh, what, yeah. What did, uh, was, 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 yeah, really awesome. Um, Way Mardel, I really love his, yeah. uh, <laughs> his present. And uh, if he was if he was more serious, um, uh, he had won some tournaments, but he was yeah. more on the entertaining, but a uh, really nice player to watch. Um, then, uh, um, I will say, it's before my time, but uh, I love to see always John Lowe. Uh, yeah. He, but just the easy, smooth, and uh, good. And I think it's a really nice man. It's, 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 it's yeah, just yeah. I no, no arrogance, something like this. Just... Just a nice guy. And five, I will say. Um, yeah, on this moment, uh, he's playing, and I really love that man. He's uh, this, uh, Glenn Durant. Oh, I'm, yeah, brilliant, I'm, Glenn. I met him a couple of years ago in, in, the, in the BDO, and uh, he's such uh, a, a nice man and, and so gentle, and I want to help you. and. Uh, and the way he's playing now, I've really got some uh, respect for him. But uh, yeah, hopefully I'm uh, going to play him quick and beat his ass because <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the most important thing at the end of the day. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, no, I really like, uh, but yeah, I, I can make 10 or 12 names, but <laughs> five yeah. is not. <laughs> <laughs> but you mentioned Glenda, and you must take huge inspiration seeing what he's done um, after winning his tour card last year and seeing what he's done already in the PDC. Yeah, uh, he's in that, in that way, a sort of, um, uh, how do you call it? Uh, um, I can't find the word. Um, uh, this example, you know, he's, uh, yeah, yeah. he's done uh, on this moment. Um, opened my eyes, maybe. Like, yeah. oh. He's doing really well. He was, of course, the best player at the BDO circuit on that moment. Oh, yeah. But um, what he was doing in his first year was exceptional. Uh, reaching yeah. all those tournaments and 
earning more than 100,000 pounds, something like that, uh, in, yeah. in one uh, reaching the Premier League in, in now already. In, in, it's now unbelievable. He's, he's, he's top, yeah. <laughs> uh, and like yeah. yesterday, uh, how he beat uh, Peter Wright. Um, oh, yeah, brilliant. Uh, brilliant, yeah. And uh, and it's such, uh, such a nice guy. Uh, I really love that. But yeah, there are so much. Michael Van Gerwen is also funny and nice. And there are so much players. And yeah. also from... Andy Fordham, I would love, love to watch Andy Fordham. <laughs> the Viking. The Viking, yeah. So, uh, no, there are five players, yeah. For me, they're like, there are two grand darts of darts, which I really saw playing darts, and that's Raymond Van Barnum and Phil Taylor. Yeah. It's from, that's from my age, uh, but I saw on TV, television. So, that's, I think that the two most important one. Uh, uh, yeah, for me. Yeah, right. Um, thank you very much for joining me, Martin. It's been brilliant to uh, speak to You're you. Welcome. Uh, I wish you all the best going forward now, and hopefully you can uh, kick on and get in that top thirty-two or even top top sixteen very soon. Hopefully, I will do my best, and I will uh, I will not give up till I reach my goal. So uh, it has to be. <laughs> Cheers, Martin. Have a good day. Cheers. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Bye.